Hello, hello, beautiful people. Ashley Yvonne here, and I'm the founder of the movement entitled Drop Everything and Pray, where we change our lives by acting boldly in prayer. And this afternoon, I wanted to drop just a quick midday push um, because, I mean, who doesn't need some encouragement? And so if you, if the topic is intriguing to you, and it probably is, which is why you're on here right now, do me a favor and share this with as many people as possible because um, you, this is a word you do not want to miss. This is a word you do not uh, want to miss. So y'all go ahead and y'all help me share this uh, with as many folks as possible because baby, I'm rich and so are you. All right. I was doing some reflection, some reflecting about just like the position and posture uh, in the realm of business, uh, Holy Spirit. Uh, had me up all night the other night just learning about the principles or the behaviors of the wealthy. And oftentimes my, my timeline is inundated with folks who are making prophetic declarations around the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. And we often talk about um, that in terms of money, but knowledge is wealth. The reason why people are wealthy financially, psychologically, socially is because they have the wealth of knowledge and not just knowledge, but the application of that knowledge in the realm, hey David, of application, okay? And so our topic for today, Midday Push, is I'm rich and you are too. And uh, one of the things, I was I was studying Robert uh, Kiyosaki, he's the author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And one of the things he said was, he said that schools uh, teach our children how to be poor because there is a culture of never wanting to make a mistake. And when I thought about the trajectory of my life, uh, I was in education for over 10 years. I was in church. I was a church girl for over 10, you know, all my life. And there is a a uh, a boundary or a stronghold hey sis there's a stronghold as relates to being perfect and so people who if you if you listen to folk stories if you go listen to millionaires who built themselves up from nothing oftentimes they were not good at school because schools are conditioning you to be poor because it conditions you to do things just one way and to never go outside of the realm of what you have seen other people do okay schools make you poor and i'm i'm telling you this listen i was an educator i was a teacher for five years i was an administrator for five years i was an assistant principal i was a principal of a school and the way in which the educational system is set up is for you to be poor so imagine being indoctrinated with a poverty mindset your entire life and then you get these prophetic words that you're supposed to be rich and wealthy and you're frustrated because you don't see the money coming in. Well, the wealth of the wicked, the knowledge of the wicked is laid up. It's stored up for the righteous ones. But in order for us to access it, we have to renew our mind. Hey, prophetess Shadana. And so your mistake builds your momentum. I even wrote down here, your mistake is a prophetic moment. Put that in the chat. My mistake is a prophetic moment. Why? The Bible says that he gives grace to the humble, but he resists. He come against the proud, those who have exalted themselves. And so in order for you to really, um, you know, tap into what this, what we call this wealth mindset, it's not just uh, about the money. It's very possible for you to win the lottery and get $20 million. You hit the Powerball and you get $20 million and it will go through your fingers like nothing before. And it's because of the mindset. Uh, sis, she said, I'm homeschooling a billionaire right now. My five-year-old is planning a trip to Japan right now. Girl, I was just praying. This is the confirmation. I was just praying to God because right now I'm homeschooling my youngest daughter. I was considering making some shifts with my oldest daughter as well. And the reason why I wanted to do that was because I know firsthand that the government controls the knowledge that is given to the lower and middle class through the educational system, which is why those who are of the elitist right realm they oftentimes homeschool their children because the mindset of poverty is 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 enveloped in the educational system and i know that because i was in it 
okay? My mistake is a prophetic moment. My mistake is a prophetic moment. Y'all better jump in the river. Y'all better sow into this word because my God is hot off the press. I'm so hyped right now. I could jump out this seat, okay? Period. I'm rich and you are too. And so what are the three things, right? We need to really think about. I already said that your mistake is a prophetic moment. The, re the reason why you need a savior is because you are going to mess up. The reason why a God promised to never leave you or what forsake you is because he knows the way that you take. And I'm going to give you all some scripture here. It says uh, Psalms 37 and 24 it says, though he may, though he fall, he shall not be cast headlong for the Lord upholds what? his hand, right? And so some of you are, are unable to tap into the riches because you are afraid of making a mistake. My God, some of you are unable to really be rich in your relationships, being rich in your finances, being rich in your business, being rich in your career because you are afraid to get it wrong. And the very thing that you refuse to do because you don't want to make a state mistake could be the thing that brings wealth into your life. My God, how many people have accidentally just stumbled upon content, stumbled upon conversations, stumbled upon people? And I just hear Father say for you, embrace the mistake because it's in the mistake that you learn something new some of us are unable to bounce back and with the vengeance because we wallow in the fact that we made a mistake but if you sit with God and you abide in the reality that God is always there he was there when you made the mistake he was there when you thought about making the mistake he was there when you didn't think it was a mistake and you were prideful and arrogant and didn't take anybody's advice he was there when you thought you could do it all by yourself and you don't need nobody. He was there when you realized, oh my God, I made a mistake. He was there all a while. And so I hear Father say, embrace the mistake. Yes, you lost money. Yes, it was a bad business deal. Yes, your car may about to be getting repossessed, but he was there all along. Embrace the mistake. Y'all better jump into this river. Y'all share this because I feel the fire of God on me. I'm going to give you all three things you need to focus on in order for you to really tap into the riches because I am rich and you are too. My sister, she said, I, you are all up in my business right now. I've been being so careful because I don't want to mess up with God, uh, with what God has entrusted me with, right? He was there. The mistake builds the momentum, the mistake. There is knowledge that I have that I would have never gotten had I not made the mistake. Unfortunately, there is knowledge that I have about relationships that I would have never required had I not married the wrong person. Hello, somebody. There is knowledge that I have about what it means to really know who I am because of the mistake. The mistake created wealth in me, my God. And wealth is knowledge. Anyone who is wealthy is a prophetic problem solver. Somebody put that in the chat. I am, y'all share this, a prophetic problem solver. That means that I have eyesight to be able to look at something and know that is it this is a problem but because i am a prophetic problem solver i can't just walk past the problem and not say anything and so y'all are oh my god i just hear the father say we keep repeating the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous but you are afraid to solve problems hey kiana i am i shall never be afraid to solve a problem i am a prophetic problem solver as i was doing my research I sat down at this table at about five o'clock in the morning and I said, Lord, I know that you have given me the, the power to obtain wealth. God, how do I do it? And the thing that the father put in my heart, he says, learn the language of liberty, learn the language of money. And I said, Lord, well, how do I do that? And he's a Kalaban Zokolaba. And he said, go into YouTube. This is the stuff they're not preaching over the pulpit. He said, go into YouTube. And he says, type Type in Tony Robbins and he says, watch the first video that comes up, my God. And as I was watching this three hour video and two o'clock in the morning, some of y'all are not able to tap into wealth because you wanna sleep all the time. Some of you are unable to get prophetic downloads cause you're unwilling to make a sacrifice. And so I didn't go to sleep until five o'clock 
in the morning because God was unlocking secrets to me. God bless you, my sister. God was unlocking secrets to me. And so I go into Tony Robbins and the father had been teaching me about the ability to take care of myself physically. And I didn't know why he kept sending those righteous rebukes about it. And when I watched the video about Tony Robbins, they were talking about how your body is a machine and how there are certain toxins that if you don't detox from it, you can't create things in your mind. And because you are a prophetic problem solver, you have to be able to access the, the, the prophetic DNA. That's why God, when he created man, he breathed the Ruach, the breath of life into you. And some of you all are interrupting God's breath because you have a perverted diet. My God. Oh, my God. Some of you all are banzo. Some of you all are unable to ingest the wealth of the wicked because you refuse to change your appetite. My Lord. Woo, Jesus, y'all share this today. I feel the fire of God on me. I feel the fire of God on me. If you feel led to sow, go ahead and drop some seed in the ground. Your mistake, if y'all just jumping on, uh, the, the topic was I'm rich and you are too. And, and, and the thing that the father said to me was the reason why we're not getting the wealth and the knowledge that the, that the rich people has is because we are unwilling to make a mistake. We're being too careful about what God has carried carefully crafted. He was there all a while. He was there. The Bible says in Psalm 91, lest you dash your foot against a stone, the angels are already there. If you don't do it the right way, the angels are there. If you make a mistake, Holy Spirit is there because you are already. The Bible says greater is he that is what? Within you than he that is in the world. The Bible says that I am the vine and you are the branches. And my father, he is the gardener. And any, oh my God, here we go. Any, any branch that does does not produce one of the translation says uh, uh, the print the branch that does not produce has been elevated has been propped up and so he can get access to those to those things that are producing isn't it ironic that the people who don't have any weight are getting elevated quicker than the ones who are toiling the ground than the ones who are praying than the ones that are prophesying than the ones who are living holy and I hear my father say some of you all haven't been elevated prematurely because what you're carrying is just too heavy and you gotta be prone so you can produce more that's why you'll see oh my god we are seeing the escalation of people being demoted in the spirit realm because when you don't have weight you are easy to elevate and your elevation y'all it has not been easy because you got weight on you my god the reason why it feels like you're last in line is because there's a much fruit that is attached to you because you have been attached to the vine. Somebody say much fruit, much fruit. Let me calm down. I came on here to teach. My God. Woo, when you don't have weight, you're easy to elevate. My God, that's why you can have a 12-year-old bishop. When you don't have weight, and I'm talking about weight in the spirit, but y'all know, if you when you don't have weight, you are easy to elevate. But because I have much fruit, my God, I take root because I have much fruit. Hey, Lily, I take root. And so today's topic, midday push, we talked about I'm rich and you are too. If this is a good moment in time, hey, Tony, for y'all to drop some seed in the ground. If this has been confirmation to what God has said to you, I need somebody to drop some seed in the ground. I'm rich and you are too. One of the things that, hey, Maya, that Holy Spirit revealed to me, I was doing some more research, right? I'm sitting here, I'm saying, Lord, I know that there's a strategy. I know there's something that you want me to do in order to be able to finance the kingdom, right? I know that it is not a part of your design for me to have to sell chicken dinners in order to do a prayer, uh, a service, right? God, I know that is not your will. I know that the wealth of the wicked, the knowledge of the wicked, the access to that knowledge is, is laid up for me somewhere. And so God, how do I access it? And it was in prayer that God 
he pointed me to how to uh, adopt the, the, the attitudes, the mindset uh, of the rich. All the information that you need to become a millionaire, you can find it on YouTube if you just apply it to your life, my God. If you just apply what is out there to your life, you can have riches quicker than you than you could ever imagine. And so, whoo, Jesus. One of the things that holy that, that I learned as I was studying the habits of the rich and I was listening to rich people and how they talk about business, how they talk about uh, uh, their families, how they develop skill sets. If you notice, a lot of people who came from nothing were not um, heavily involved or successful in the educational system in America because the educational system is designed to create people that are employees, people that are poor, people who are ignorant about how money works. Works, right you can't say that you want to be a kingdom financier and a kingdom millionaire and you don't know what a depreciating asset is come on somebody you don't know what cash flow is you don't know how to read a bank statement you don't know uh, how to have fiscal responsibility you don't know how to balance a checkbook right in order for God to give you something he's not gonna pour something into a pot that has holes in it he's not gonna put new wine into old wine skin my god a poverty mindset I work for money. I, I exchange time for money. That is a poverty mindset. You exchange money for value, right? You ag acquire assets uh, in order to increase your cash flow my god and so in order for you um in order for you to really obtain wealth you gotta get rid of the old wine skin shopping and you having three thousand dollar bags and three dollars in the bank that is old wine skin some of you all refuse to let go of some things that make you look like you have money in order for you to really build wealth it is old wine skins and i'm not telling you anything that god has not convicted me of and i'm making decisions about right now i am rich and you are too because your mistakes some of us are not wealthy because we are afraid to make a mistake we are afraid to call the bank we are afraid to call uh and get a business coach we are afraid to reveal that we messed up and the reason why we're unable to acquire wealth is because we are unable to to, to humble ourselves enough to say god i don't know everything when you study people who are highly successful one of the things that they often do they say that they are a student of life that they are always learning they are always reading they are always researching they are always acquiring knowledge because it is the bible says when there's a lack of vision what the people perish right and so you cannot wear that's right i love that prophet shadana says she says i don't wear what i don't and what i cannot invest my lord and so i am rich hey hey uh prophet herbert and you are too and so the three things y'all drop some seed in the ground if this has been blessing you the thing that really blew my mind today it like blew my mind y'all i was i was reading a book on investment i was just reading a just one of the kind of preliminary pages in this book about investments and there's a 90 there's a 90 10 rule 10 90 rule however you say it and and it says that 10 percent of the population owns 90% of the money. I'll say it again. 10% of the population owns 90% of the money. And I said, wow, Lord, that 10%, you know, as churchgoers, we know that to be a tithe. And I said, Lord, I don't just want to give a tithe. I want to become a tithe. I'll say it again. I don't want to just give a tithe. Y'all type that. I want to become a tithe. I want to become a part of that 10% who owns 90% of the wealth in this world. And so when we tap into, when we destroy the poverty mindset that says that I work, I only work for money you should not just work for money you should work for knowledge you should work for experience if you see that there's a problem you have a skill set to solve it go tell the person i'm gonna solve that problem for you and don't even worry about paying me for it because people who are wealthy know that money is not the only form of an asset knowledge is an asset is an asset health is an asset right of partnerships and relationships all of those things are assets in order to acquire and to keep wealth.
Jesus, let me calm down. And so the first thing you need to worry, you think about is your mindset, your mind. How do you think about what it means to be rich? Some of us are very rich on the external and very poor on the internal, your mind. The Bible says, let this mind be in you, which is what? Also in Christ Jesus. What does the word of the Lord say about the mind? If you do a study on the mind, one of the meanings, uh, yeah, one of the definitions or the meanings, the biblical meanings of the word mind, means listen this the seat of your appetite your mind is the seat of your appetite and whatever you crave you produce right um and what and when you when you when you adjust to a particular craving sometimes when when you first start trying to eat vegetables that you don't eat vegetables first it tastes nasty because the environment of your body has been has been accustomed to being poisonous or being really acidic in nature and as your ph balance starts to level out you your body then is able to adjust and your body is then able to actually really digest and taste whatever you are um try, whatever new thing you're trying to learn to eat and, and your body won't reject it it'll become satisfying to your soul it'll become satisfying to your body and so in order for you to acquire a new mindset in order for you to acquire an appetite a real appetite for wealth and not poverty right is to shift your appetite the appetite of your mind whatever goes through your five senses is influencing the appetite of your mind i'll say it again y'all share this. this is good teaching um whatever you are, are are sensing in your five senses it is um providing food or nourishment for the mind the seat of your appetite right and so the more people who are married, amen, right? The more you touch your wife and you hug your wife or your spouse, the more you want to do it because you've acquired an appetite through your senses. The more you eat cookies, the more you eat chocolate, the more you do these particular things, you, you acquire an appetite and a desire for something the more that you do it. And so the father, um, as y'all are jumping on, as I was sitting here, I, I just I just heard so many things in the spirit, but the biggest thing, was hey Khadija the biggest thing was how 10% of the population owns 90% of the money and I was like Lord I just don't want to give a tithe I just I want to become a tithe and the way that I become a tithe is through um adjusting the the, the appetite uh, or the seat of the appetite which is my mind right and anything that is in your mind your mind is being fed by your five senses okay and so your mindset is the first thing you need to do right I am rich and so are you the second thing you need to focus on is your money what is money what is the history of money what are the different systems in terms of how money works how does money work in Italy versus how money works in in Australia or how money works in the United States of America right having the language of liberty in the area of money and I want to let you all know um, I know a lot of people are just prophesying you're gonna be a millionaire and I'm gonna lay this this millionaire anointing upon you but I'm gonna tell you this the father is not gonna pour out anything on uh, on something that is perverted and some of us and you think that perversion is just about having sex you think perversion is just about being wicked or or, or treating on your wife but perversion is meaning that is anything that is out of God's original intent in terms of what you are doing some of your mindsets are perverted in the area of money and you ignorantly believe that if you acquire depreciating asset assets that you are wealthy but the father says he's not gonna pour out wealth into perversion in this season he's not doing it I know you got all the prophetic words. I know that you went to all the seminars. I know, I know you read all the scriptures about wealth. I know that you did that. And I'm here to tell you, I'm here to destroy some demonic patterns today. God is not giving you wealth. If you are um, engulfed in a perverted old mindset, money cometh to those, money sustainable wealth, right? It's gonna come to those who have done the work as it relates to of releasing and detoxing those old mindsets your mind jesus your money and the third thing you need to focus on is your ministry somebody put that in the chat your mind your money your ministry your mind your money and your ministry some of us 
are unable to really operate in true liberty ministry talking about what is how do you use what you have to serve others if you know about washing clothes who have you taught how to wash clothes right you have to get you have to get accustomed to planting seeds right people who are wealthy are accustomed to planting seeds of time of relationship of talent of conversation people are you know you, you get acquired you get a you get a, an appetite right for serving when you when ministry is all about right the exterior i was just watching a video the other day of shaquille o'neal and one of the things he does when he goes to walmart he purchases things for people just randomly he just goes and he sows into uh, their lives because he realizes um, that there's a biblical principle that is tied to providing for others the Bible says that if you turn your head away from those that are poor that many curses will be upon you some of us um, are, are have not really um, ingested the reality of, of what it means to really serve and have ministry right a ministry mind of servanthood and so in order for us to really acquire that wealth that is laid up uh, by the by the uh, rich or the wicked rather the, the wealth is the knowledge and the application of that knowledge i know that your preachers are telling you if you sow 222 dollars that this is going to be your turnaround miracle but i'm telling you if you consistently decide to ignore the sister who you know is struggling financially you know she can't feed her kids you know you know she's walking to church and you drive right past her and, and the bible says when you ignore those who are poor that many curses shall be upon you they don't teach that in the pulpit because they want your tithes and your offerings. But I want to tell you the truth of this glad gospel on today. There are principles that the father has put into his word that those who are seemingly right ungodly are prospering from prophetic principles because they are applying it. And the principles don't discriminate. My God, I'm going to say that again. For all of those who think that because I'm black, that I, principles don't discriminate. When you apply the prophetic principle when you apply the prophetic principle when you pull on the systems of our lord when you when you pull on thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth when it as it is in heaven the principles do not discriminate i want to know what race are you in the spirit right when you die today or tomorrow does a principle of racism still apply to you then and so if it does not apply to you in the spirit then it should not apply to you in the natural because you are having a supernatural experience i need somebody to elevate their mind said my god i am rich and so are you allison and ronald i am rich and a lot of us are unable to uh, acquire the knowledge the skill set the wealth of the wicked because we are afraid to make a mistake we are afraid to confess the mistake and we are afraid to make a mistake like we are so afraid to make a mistake but it's in the mistake that you are able to get the knowledge that the wealthy have acquired because they have not been afraid to make a mistake for all of those perfect patties and it was me as well all those perfect patties out there who are are who are who are afraid to make a mistake who are afraid to lose anything you are afraid to let you know these this, this stuff go the father is telling you when you are humble enough to make a mistake you are gaining wealth Every Every loss that you have acquired, you are gaining wealth. We see that in the parable, I believe, found in John 15. The parable of I am the vine, you are the branches. Every branch in me that does not bring forth fruit, I, I separate it, I burn it up. It ain't doing nothing for me. But every branch that is in me, right? He says, if you abide in me and I abide in you, out from, from you, you shall produce from you when you abide, when you live in me. And when you live in God when you live in Jesus there is a process of pruning and here is a revelation that father gave me a couple weeks back uh, I was I was reading a story about how Jesus was going to the cross uh, and I can't remember the name of the man that they there was a servant there that actually helped Jesus he helped Jesus carry his cross uh, and um one of the meanings of 
that person, where that person was from, one of the meanings of that person's name was a reputation. And some of us are unable to acquire wealth because you're too worried about your reputation. You're too worried about what people are going to think about how much money you have or don't have. You're too worried about what people are going to think when you drive up in that hoopty. You're too worried about what people are going to think if you are educated and your kids are going to the school in the hood. You, you're too worried about what people are going to think. And just like Jesus, he crucified even his very reputation, what people thought he would be known for. And he allowed even his own reputation, even though he was God in the flesh, he allowed himself to take on the identity of death in order to have a resurrected season. And so my question for you all today is how low are you willing to go in order for you to produce the wealth? What are you willing to let go of? What are you willing to sell? What are you willing to just say, I don't care what people think. I'm chasing after God and I'm chasing after purpose. I don't care what you think about what you think I have, but because I know that the principles do not discriminate, I'm chasing after what God has assigned to me. My God, before the foundations of the world, I am rich and so are you. I am anointed and so are you. I want somebody to release that pride off of you today and embrace the fact that you don't know everything. Embrace the fact that you made a mistake in your finances. Embrace the fact that you made a mistake in your business. Embrace the fact that you don't know what you need to know. But I'm telling you this, because there is greater within you than he that is in the world, the Father promises that you shall produce. When you, oh my God, a Apply the principle, you shall produce. Somebody say produce in the chat. Somebody say produce, my God. In the chat, somebody say produce. Yakalaban Zebekia. Somebody say produce in the chat. Our topic, our mid hey Kanaya. Uh, I hope I said your name right. Um, somebody say produce in the chat. Uh, the father, he just put that in my spirit. I don't just want to give a tithe. I want to become a tithe. And I want to I want to be completely aware of the fact that my mistake is a prophetic moment and I'm going to work on my mind, my money and my ministry so that I can really produce the wealth that God has ordained for me to produce. Amen. That he that uh, he's ordained for you to produce and not just for you to produce, but for your children to produce. Now, y'all, if I said something that really just woke you up today. If I said something that resonated with you, drop some seed in the ground. Giving is a principle. Your mistake is a prophetic moment. Your, your mistake is a prophetic moment. Your mistake, uh, it is a prophetic moment and you shall pursue, you shall overtake and you shall recover it all. But you have to apply the principles that are here in the scripture, be it unto you. Okay. If you say, if you're sowing, say I'm sowing in the chat, I'm just going to pray for you right now. Yes. My mind, my money, and my ministry, my mind, my money, and my ministry, my mind, my money, and my ministry. If you need prayer, drop uh, your prayer request in the chat right here. I have just a few more moments before I have to go pick up my daughter from school. Um, but I want to be able to just sow a seed of prayer into your life. If you are sowing a financial seed, go ahead and do that. Uh, because I am rich and you you are too. I don't just want to give a tithe. I want to become a tithe. And in order for me to become a tithe, I have to apply the principle. Principles do not discriminate. Principles do not care if you're black, white, yellow, orange, uh, a blue, purple. Principles does not principle does not care if your hair is a 4C or 4A. Principles do not care if you if you if you lost your job. Uh, principles you can still produce in any environment if you apply the principle, right? And so you have to, right? Get this mind. Okay. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray now for my sister. I want to say your name is Ty Star. Let me know if that's right. Um, and so Father, I pray now, God, that you would touch her mind. Lord, you said that you will keep what we commit to you. And so, Father, I pray that you will continue to reveal to her in the secret face the 
the secret place, the strategy of a kept mind. My Lord, that'll teach the strategy of a kept mind. Father, I pray now that you will give her the strategy of a kept mind. Teach her how to keep her mind in you, God. Give her the, the strategy that you have ordained for her to have, God, because everyone's not the same. And so, Father, I pray now in the name of Jesus Christ that she would apply the principles that you have uh, laid out for her in your word in order for her mind to be strategically planted in you. So, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Dominique. Yeah. Uh, so Father, I thank you that you are powerful. You are holy. You are just. And Father, I pray for Dominique. I pray for her children. I pray for everything that you've assigned to her hands, God. Allow her to produce, overtake, and recover all, God. Stretch her in her faith. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray now that you would touch my sister Carolyn from South Africa. Africa. I thank you, Lord, that you have ordained her for such a time as this one. God, I thank you. There's a territorial spirit that's in the neighborhood that you live in. And the depression that you are experiencing, Carolyn, is a result of this territorial stronghold. But as you repent on the behalf of your of your uh, ancestors and even of the people of the land, the Father says that as you come out of agreement with whatever is attached to the land, the Father says that the spirit of depression is going to fall off of you. And you're going to start to smile again. You're going to start to have joy again. And you're going to start to sleep well again. The father says, Ro, Roboco, cleanse out the idols of your heart. The idols of, of unforgiveness. The idol of relationship. The idol of worry. The father says that, that you have been sitting, resting. Oh my God, resting on the, on the helm of idolatry because you don't see any way out. But as you repent, the father says, that every curse, every about territorial spirit that is coming against you it shall break off in the measure of and so i shine the light about on every demonic device that has attached itself to your life and i apply the blood of jesus be free my god whoo i saw that in the spirit be free in the name of jesus christ oh my god father i pray now for every person who's under the sound of my voice, God, I pray for the minds. I pray for the minds. I pray for the mind. Y'all lay hands on your mind, Father. Oh my goodness. In the name of Jesus, I speak to this mind and I command this mind to be aligned with the mind of Christ. I baptize this mind in the name of Jesus. And I decree and declare that there will be prophetic strategies downloaded to this mind. God, that you will liberate this mind by impregnating this mind. God, we impregnate this this mind with the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord says, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord says that we should meditate on whatsoever things are of lovely and of good report, of, of good, re, uh, of if there be any praise, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, that we should think upon these things. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, God, we are abanzo korebebe si akalabanzo labakani God, we baptize this mind with your word, God, because you said in John 1 that you are your word. And so, God, as we as we baptize this mind, we speak, oh my God, that the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, it will guide our hearts and our minds through Christ Jesus. According to Philippians 4 and 7, God, we prophesy to this mind that this mind will not conform to the pattern of this world but we will be transformed by the renewing of our mind according to Romans 12 and 2 Father in the name of Jesus God we speak your word over this mind for you said in your word that we have the mind of Christ and so Father God reveal to us the strategies not just the mind of Christ God but what does the mind of Christ look like God give us a revelation of the mind of Christ Christ. What does the mind of Christ sound like? What does the mind of Christ look like? What does the mind of Christ hear like? Father, help us to know your word, your way, your plan, and to know your mind. God, help us to know your mind. That we will be transformed by the renewing. Baptize us with your spirit and renew us. Renew us. Renew us. Renew us, renew us, renew us, renew us, 
in our minds in the name of Jesus Christ. People of God, I got to go pick up my baby, but I want you to know something here. You are already rich. Apply the principle. Stop being afraid to make a mistake. Focus on your mind, your ministry, and your money. And apply the blood of Jesus and apply the word of God to your mind. Remember that your mistake is a ministry moment. And so you should embrace every mistake because it shall produce for you. Remember that you are a prophetic problem solver. That every problem has a solution. And the solution is found and the greater is he that is within you than he that is in the world. And so I can't wait to hear about about how you have solved problems prophetically i can't wait to hear about how you were praying about something in god just like he downloaded to me he downloaded to you another strategy i can't wait to hear about how you had this one issue that was just riddling and racking your mind and you didn't know what to do and you're screaming and asking god to intervene and god revealed to you the strategy on what to do i, I just can't wait to hear about how you are a prophetic problem solver this week i can't wait to hear about how your children have become prophetic problem solvers as a result of you hearing this live feed today i can't wait to hear about what you are going to prophetically produce as you apply the principle of what god has put into your hands i love you all i mean i love you all a lot a lot or whatever okay i love you big and i cannot wait to hear about how all of the wealth that you're going to acquire even today today you became wealthy if you learned something that you did not learn before if you heard something that you did not hear before for and you start to apply it you are wealthy you have become wealthy in this particular moment this is your moment of breakthrough this is your moment of wealth this is your moment of riches if you apply the principle and you uh and you ask father to give you a new appetite okay i love you all if you drop seed in the ground god bless you if you drop seed in the ground put your i want to be able to pray for you and so i'm gonna go through and take a look right you just became wealthy my lord Woo, that just hit me thank you thank you holy spirit i just became wealthy Woo, just now i just became wealthy my god today y'all know i'm churchy I just became wealthy in this moment. This is my wealthy moment. This right here, all up in here is my wealthy moment. I love y'all. Cannot wait to hear about your wealthy moment and y'all have a wonderful day.